What's up, guys? Welcome to a new day. I'm Stephanie Ryder, and this is the 365 Shares Podcast. It's February 26th, 2024, and today's topic is blame. The Big Red Book says the principles of ACA are not about blame. The book also says, as part of our recovery process, many ACA members take a blameless inventory of their parents to understand and stop the generational nature of family dysfunction. The parents are not blamed. However, the adult child examines how he or she was raised in connection with levels of nurturing, discipline, and feeling safe. In homes where obvious abuse and violence existed, the adult child names the behavior as one of the first steps in removing power from such parental acts. It's such a core tenet of ACA that we're not blaming anyone. There's a great passage in the book that's a story about a line of people from the family all lined up on a hill in order, and that they're passing this bundle one on one to each other down the line. And the bundle is your family dysfunction or your generational trauma or your shame. And they use this story to illustrate the point that even though your parents tried to hand you the bundle, They were handed it by their parents, who were handed it by their parents, and so on down the line. So it's really not fair just to blame our parents for everything that they did to us or everything that happened to us because the way they acted was caused by their parents and the way that they acted was caused by their parents. It just keeps going back and back. It's also really important, I think, in ACA just to show that the point of this program isn't to scorch the earth. This is a healing and recovery-based program where we're trying to find compassion for ourselves, which is difficult for a lot of adult children, but also for people who are problematic figures in our lives. Parental figures that people talk about in my meetings range from just being people who are emotionally dismissive. Maybe they're alcoholics, maybe they're narcissists, maybe they themselves are just not in touch with their feelings, to anything from parents who beat them, parents who sexually abuse them, parents who abandon them, any number of horrible ways that these parents can be viewed as villains. But the passage in the Strengthening My Recovery book says, our parents and caregivers were not able to give us what they did not have. The disease of alcoholism or other family dysfunction affects generations and did not start with our immediate family. And ACA carries that idea into thinking about ourselves. We're not supposed to blame ourselves unnecessarily for the things we have done. A lot of adult children have children and grandchildren. And despite their best efforts, they became their parents in a lot of ways. We're not supposed to blame ourselves. We did the best we could. Our parents did the best we could. Every generation does the best we could. And I've talked about this a lot, but every generation tries to make it a little bit better. And I just saw a post of someone speaking, I think at a funeral and saying, my grandfather walked 10 miles to work every day. My father walked five miles to work every day. I drive a Cadillac. So there's growth in every generation, hopefully. And there are lessons learned in every generation. I'm Steph, and this is my share. I love this topic for today because I actually had a conversation with my aunt and uncle today about ACA for the first time. It happened because in my meeting last night, there was a guy who kind of reminded me of my uncle, and especially what he talked about, just the way his father yelled at him and was really harsh toward him and how it affected him, really reminded me of my uncle and the way that my grandfather treated him growing up. And every time I see older people in ACA meetings, like parents, grandparents, I think, wow, I really wish my family had found this program. I wish the older people in my family had either been aware of this program or willing to participate in it. So I always just look at these older people in the meetings, like especially people over 60, with just such gratitude and awe that they're still working on themselves and that they care enough about themselves and their families to show up and do this work and to find a community of fellow travelers to like keep looking for their true self. There is someone in our program who's been in it for 35 years. He's still working on himself. He reads trauma books. He goes to therapy. To still be self-actualizing and trying to be your best self in retirement, to me, is like the best, coolest thing that anyone could do. So I hope I'm still doing this when I'm old. I hope I'm still trying to be my best self, helping people, being a shining light for younger members, being someone that my friends and my family can be proud of especially as I hopefully eventually have my own kids and maybe someday even grandkids, who knows. But I think about this aunt and uncle a lot and they're such kind people. 
They started out in their relationship when they were young, so joyous, and life has really beat them down. They've had a lot of loss, a lot of trauma. They themselves have lost all of their parents. We lost my mom at a young age, which was my uncle's sister, and that hit everyone really hard. And my aunt says that he never really fully recovered from that. And they still find so much joy in each other, and they still love their kids and the rest of the family, but it just makes me sad to see them what I perceive to be struggling because they just seem to have so much accumulated trauma and shame piled up onto them. It just seems like it slows them down, like physically and visually slowing them down, like gunk gumming up the works in an engine. And I'd been having some angry codependent thoughts about them because they occasionally do things that hurt my feelings. And I know they never intend to hurt my feelings. They're just doing their best. But sometimes I imagine them doing or saying something that hurts my feelings and like what I'm going to do to clap back at them or to lash out or to like try to shut them down so they don't do it anymore. But it occurred to me that if I'm doing this program and I never share with them that I'm doing this program and that my partner is participating in this program and how much it's helping us, they might not even know about it, have ever heard of it. They certainly won't know that I'm doing it. They won't know how my fellow travelers are treating me, which is so great. And it certainly wouldn't be fair of me to get mad at them now or at any point in the future for not participating in a program if I don't at least share it with them. But the fear always with sharing something like this with family members is that they'll get mad at you. They'll get defensive. They'll take it as a threat. They'll say something hurtful because they don't want you to share this type of information. But I texted them this morning and I said there was a guy in my meeting last night who looked like my uncle and I took that as a sign just to pass this on. So all I sent them was the link to the homepage of the ACA website, which is adultchildren.org for anyone out there who hasn't been to the website. It's very good. And I will preface this story by saying that I texted my brother last night for the first time since right after our Christmas trip, so probably the first time this year, and just said, I love you with an exclamation mark. And he didn't get back to me last night, even though he probably wasn't in bed yet when I texted him. And this morning he responded, but all he did was love me saying, I love you to him. So he didn't even say, I love you back. He just loved me saying that I loved him. So that really kind of messed me up. But then an hour or so later, I messaged my aunt and uncle and I sort of braced myself for either silence or for them to just do like a very dismissive like of what I sent them. But my uncle responded right away and said like, thank you, I love you. And then my aunt responded with something really funny that was like, but oh, do you have a program for? And then she went into like her very specific dysfunction that her family had created. And I laughed at that. And then I said, actually, it's all the same group. It's really a catch-all for any type of alcoholism, addiction, adultery, shame, religious abuse, like any kind of dysfunction. And she said, oh, it occurs to me that if the population for this meeting is anyone raised in any type of dysfunction, that's pretty much anyone in the world. And I was like, yeah, I totally agree. So that was a fun little dialogue. And then she was like, you know, but in all seriousness, I'm really glad that you found this and that it's helping you. So then I said, it's a great group, really focused on nourishing our inner children without blaming the people who unintentionally failed to nourish them in the way they would have wanted to be nourished, which I think is a very accurate representation of ACA. It's really not about blaming. It's just about growth and healing. And I said that not only because it's true, but I emphasized it because I wanted them to know that they didn't have to turn on their parents. They didn't have to join some type of witch hunt to demonize long dead parents who did the best they could, who made it clear that they loved their children. And I also subconsciously kind of wanted to also throw in that like anything that my aunt and uncle may have done that was not ideal either in their lives or impacting my life, that I don't blame them for that either. And I had to sort of make that decision to myself before I sent it that like, I don't blame them. And I have blamed them so much, I think in my life for just quote unquote, letting me down but I was listening to my Codependent No More audiobook, which I open periodically and just start whatever chapter is the next chapter. And I got so much value out of it. I always do. And it was talking about the stages of grief that were initially created for people who find out that they're dying of a terminal illness, but that really apply to anyone who's dealing with grief or loss. It says you're allowed to be angry. You're allowed to be sad. You have to process your grief, but then eventually you have to come to acceptance and you have to acknowledge that what happened happened, that you can't change it, 
and that somehow it either benefited you or put you on the path that you are now. So I think in a small way, I was finally able to get through this years long process of being angry with some of my family members and just getting to a place of acceptance where I said, you know what, it's not serving me to blame them. I'm not being a good ACA member if I'm blaming anyone in my family because the blame would have to go so many dozens or hundreds of generations back. And I shared my truth with them in what I think, what I hope was a positive way, which is something I struggle with. I tend to be very blunt. And especially with regard to my siblings, I definitely don't always post things in a healthy way, even though I try. But I was happy that I was brave and that I messaged my aunt and uncle and that they messaged me right back and that they weren't dismissive. They engaged with me. I don't know if they will ever go to ACA or join an online meeting or read any of the materials, but I kind of don't need them to. If they do, that's great. If it helps them, that's great. But they were good parents to me today because I shared with them something that was important to me and something that's helping me. And they responded with love. So I just want to go on the record and say that my aunt and uncle were really good parents to me today. I view them as surrogate parents a lot of the time, which is why I sometimes get angry at them. And I think this is like the most I've cried doing this podcast, but like everyone just wants to be loved by their parents or the people who helped raise them. And just like their graciousness and their humor and their love today meant so much to me, especially when I'm still not in a great place with my brother and sister. But I have two sets of close aunts and uncles in my immediate family. And honestly, they've all been lovely. So I'm just so thankful for them. And I'm finding my acceptance with the fact that I don't have a great relationship with my siblings right now and that it may take a really long time for us to have even a good relationship, maybe not ever a great relationship, but I'm being thankful for what I have. I'm being thankful for positive texts and I'm hoping that I can share some good news with them about some progress that I'm making in a few areas of my life in the next few weeks. It will just be more love and more healing and more fun and more joy. So there you go. You guys got me. And I'll end with the affirmation from the Strengthening My Recovery book, which says, On this day, I choose not to blame others or myself for being unable to give what was never given to me. I feel grateful knowing that I can break the cycle of dysfunction and live a better life.